We've just been woken up and told that there is a potential rescue operation on the way. They're being confused, they're being relieved, they're being exhausted. We know right now that there's 10 women and one child. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, you said they were hitting you in the face and that's why you can't close your mouth properly anymore. Did you think you were going to die? Oh my God, yeah. I don't advise any of my friends to come by this journey again, you know? It, but it's a man life. You got lucky. Yeah, I'm a lucky, I'm alive. This year, more than a quarter of a million people have crossed the Mediterranean Sea from Africa to Europe. More than 2,000 have died trying to make the dangerous journey in unseaworthy boats. We joined a rescue ship operated by Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders, as part of the charity's work, providing medical aid to people around the world, they are rescuing migrants and refugees stranded in the Med. We set out from Malta towards the coast of Libya in North Africa. This is Dignity One. It is owned by Médecins Sans Frontières and all summer long it has been making the trip across the Mediterranean trying to rescue those who are making the treacherous journey themselves from Africa towards Libya. We've not long left the coast of Malta. We're on a 22 hour journey right now towards what is known as the rescue zone where we could potentially be taking part in a rescue operation. This is the upper deck of the boat. In here, the bridge. This is where Captain Francis and the crew navigate the ship from. Down the stairs, we'll head to the middle deck and we'll show you the rest of the boat. And it's here where you kind of get a sense of how big a rescue operation it could be because this boat here, the rib, is what the crew will send out when they see someone in distress. There's room for about 300 or so in here. There's some black meshing above to keep it nice and shaded. We're told it could be more than 300 and if that's the case, then there's room for about another 150 down here on the lower deck. Similar thing again, there's a canopy for shade. Down the far end, a couple of cubicles, the type you'd see at a festival, some of the crew there. And in here is the treatment room or the hospital as the team and crew refer to it. It's pretty basic, but there's a doctor, a nurse and a midwife on, on board. There's the bed in the middle, there's uh, various medical appliances and treatment packs there. Just quickly, let me show you where some of the crew have been hanging out. Through here is the kitchen, and then beyond the kitchen, the dining room, but also a place where some of the crew have been having meetings over the last few hours or so, trying to actually establish what might happen in the coming hours. Hopefully that gives you some kind of sense of what life on board Dignity One is like. Morning, it's day three. We've just been woken up and told that there is a potential rescue operation on the way. So some of the crew are uh, walking around Dignity One, getting themselves ready. If we head up to the bridge, we can find out exactly what's going to be happening. The, the crew have managed to spot the boat through binoculars. Um, I've just had a go, but because of because of the sea, because of the white waves bouncing up and down, it's extremely hard for, for me, uh, someone who's untrained to, to spot it. This chap here can definitely see it. Um, our boat is heading straight straight towards it, but it's it's still quite far away. It's an inflatable rubber boat, likely to have at least 100 people on board. That's the 30 mile line, is it? The crew estimates that the boat is about 40 miles from the Libyan coast, suggesting it's been at sea for several hours at least. Conditions are rough, and it makes the rescue more difficult than usual. Our boat is approaching the uh, rubber boat for the first time. We keep the distance. Uh, our translator is explaining who we are. And the crucial thing is not to touch the boat because people may panic and try to hop on our rescue boat. So we keep the distance and then once we explain who we are, we will distribute the life jackets. Well done, well done. 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 Well done.
Welcome, how are you? Yeah? All right. Well, it's a combination. Eh? They're, they're being confused, they're being relieved, they're being exhausted. It's, it's a combination of all. Um, so my duty or my, my challenge is here to see very quickly, one by one, if they have any medical issue that needs urgent care. So far, uh, they seem to be stable. So this is good news. Um, uh, of course, we will see them later. They will all, not all, but many of them will have uh, smaller or medium complaints later on, medical-wise. Uh, but at the moment we are just happy if they are sort of can walk um, take off their life west get registered um, take a seat take a rest and then we will see them later on and screen them medically as well Help yourself, we already have 119 people on board and there is the italian navy ship where there are more migrants on board they were picked up in a separate rescue operation earlier this morning and the plan is to transfer those on board the italian navy ship onto dignity one in the coming hours yeah, the first trip will be women and children. So we know right now that there's 10 women and one child. They will go to the little rescue boat and we will uh, greet them on board, quickly check them and then they will be br uh, brought to the to inside of the boat. With 239 people now on board, the medical team check everyone's temperature to see if anyone needs urgent attention. Everyone gets a blanket, socks and a towel. Food is basic, but it goes down well. As the sun sets, all most people want to do is sleep. This is breakfast, yes. They still have the biscuits from yesterday and, uh, and tea with a lot of sugar. Matar Gay is 20. He's from Gambia. He left to find work to support his family. And like many rescued, he'd gone to Libya, but told the doctor that whilst there, he was kidnapped and beaten. Uh, the two teeth cannot turn it over. They yeah. hit me. They are this pistol, this gun. Later, he told us how he escaped and decided to make the journey to Europe. Yeah, I came to France. You, you ran for your life? Yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going, so I'd run fast. The boat was, our boat was having some water. I was, I'm the one who was taking the water out. Your boat started to flood? Yeah, started to flood. I, I was taking the water out. After this, my guys tell me there is a helicopter coming. Did you think you might die? Uh, yeah, why not? It was in a risky journey, man. Yeah, we don't know, we will see no one, but you see God, God help us. And, hmm? Where do you want to go? What country? I want to go to in Germany. You want to go to Germany? Germany, yeah. Why Germany? Because Germany, they are, because German people are helping many refugees change, change, change this refugees, their life. But I love that country, Germany. Any, any champion leagues, any World Cup, I used to support Germany. Where's your family, Mata? My family is in Gambia. Have you spoken to them? Do they know you've tried to make this journey? Yeah, because right now, one, four months, I don't speak with them. Like four months, I don't speak with them. Do you think they are worried? I miss them, I miss them, I miss them very well, man. I miss everyone, man. Uh, this journey is very hard. Many others on board had stories of suffering violence in Libya. What did they do to your hand? It's like a shock, electric shock, electric shock. They will beat you with a big stick. Even shot me in my eye. Yeah, I mean, they put something on your eye? Yeah, they, they shock. They shock. You know, they put it in my eye. For some though, the long and difficult journey is about finding a job. So this is Abdu Kardin, he's from Gambia, I'm told it's the Smiling Coast. Yeah, the Smiling your... Coast. But you decided to leave because you couldn't get work? Yeah, because I want to have a better life and I cannot have my better life in the Gambia like that. Abu, when people in Europe see and hear this kind yeah. of story, yeah. some say people should stay in Africa and not make the journey. What do you say to them? Okay, stay in Africa. You can stay in Africa if you have a better walk. You can walk for yourself, you have a better walk. If I have a better walk in Africa, I will stay in Africa. But I don't have better walk in Africa. That's why I'm planning this journey to come Italy. But Europe has 
problems with work and jobs. As well, yeah, but it's better than Africa. One of the few women rescued was 21-year-old Nancy, a nurse from Mali. Avant d'abord d'arriver sur les bateaux, on était quelque part, on nous a gardé pendant cinq jours. Dans les cinq jours, il n'y avait pas à manger. Si tu n'as pas l'argent, tu ne peux pas manger. Moi aussi, si je savais, je n'allais pas même risquer ma vie comme ça parce que là où on, on s'était assise là, il y avait des carburants, des bidons de carburants, des, des carburants pardon, qui se sont jetés là-dedans. On s'était assis sur les carburants. En tout cas, ça nous faisait tellement mal. Et puis, on n'avait pas le choix. C'est ça qui, qui a causé le prix lire partout tel que je suis là. En tout cas, ce n'était pas facile. C'est Si on était bien là où on était, on n'allait on pas accepter de faire ce genre de voyage. Tellement, il y avait beaucoup de, des histoires qui nous ont vraiment poussé à quitter. C'est pourquoi on s'est décidé de quitter. So we are going to take you to the port. Yeah, we are going to hand you over to the authorities. Immigration in Italy. After medical checkup, they will do registration and they will send you to a welcoming center where you will stay, where you will eat, and they will give you some clothes. Yeah. But once we arrive to the port, our responsibility is over. We leave you there and we go back to the sea. So we are going to go back to recover more people like you, risking their life to cross the, the sea. Okay? So try to eat everything you can because you need to be strong eh, to survive over there. Life is difficult, it's going to be difficult. Eh, try to find nice people to help you. Eh, good luck and eh, take care of yourself. You know. Yeah, I just impressive. you. The place is very beautiful. Yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy. And I thank God for that. But to see the Italian right now, that makes us very happy. That will make us so happy to forget about all the pain with us. Okay, respect. Oh, I'm feeling good. I'm happy. I'm, 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 I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy. Thank you. I'm very happy, man. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you, all. Uh.